Hi, this video is about the routing of the neck which fits onto the guitar body from the previous video. I made some changes on this neck to get a better fit for the tuners and so on, and I also made a straight headstock and an angled headstock. This video is about the straight headstock version. A video on the angled headstock with a scarf joint will come soon. I want to thank you all for the great comments and questions. One of the questions was how do I draw the holes for the double sided technique? And also someone mentioned the project technique for when fusion doesn't allow me to select the whole contour. I'll explain how I do both. As usual I'll include the video of the actual machining and that will also show you all the details for the different strategies. I'm trying my best not to make the videos too long but still cover the details. Well then, I'd like to start with the double sided technique. Well there are a few options but I'll show you the one I find most effective nowadays. I like to flip over the stock around the Y axis, that just makes more sense to me. That way the headstock stays at the same side of the machine but just flips over on his back. I start by drawing 4 circles on the sketch which plane is on the side of the first job I run, in this case the top side. The 4 circles are within the boundaries of my stock but also far away enough from the center not to run into any other cam tool pass and the guitar neck is within the boundaries of the four circles. The circles are 6mm in diameter, the same size as my dowels and router bit. The dowel holes are symmetrically placed around the Y axis. The sketch with the four circles is part of the model in the setup page in cam. This secures the object is lined in the center of the four circles. And I also like to make a fixed box size for the stock so when I'm in simulation I can see if it all works out ok. The drill strategy bores the 4 holes in the stock. I choose the 4 center points of the circles in the sketch and on the height page I select the bottom height and make a negative offset of 12mm. My dowels are around 20mm in length. This way there is about 8-10mm to 10 mil sticking out of the spoilboard to place the flipped stock at. I also could make the top height start at the top of the stock, but that's something that might not always be necessary since the top of the hole is very near the top of the stock. Since the drill strategy starts at the zero position of the stock and the strategy goes down 12mm, I can use this very same setup and strategy for the holes on my spool board. I just export this strategy separately and run it before any other job. I hope this explains my double sided technique well enough and if you have any questions please let me know. Normally I like to run a contour strategy before I do anything else so every other strategy after that does not generate a hard collision with my stock. In my previous video I mentioned that Fusion did not allow me to select the whole contour at once so I thought well whatever Fusion so I split up the contour process. But there is a way to do it in one go but then I need to make an extra sketch for that. When Fusion for whatever reason does not allow you to select the wish contour at once, one thing you could do is to project the outline on a sketch and use that as a contour to follow. The way I like to do it is like this. I press the letter P to create a plane to project on. In this case I select the bottom of the neck joint. And then I start selecting all the outlines I want to add. It's kind of a tedious work, but the goal is to create a closed loop. Then I press OK and now I have my sketch with the outline. And then I go back to manufacture and select a 2D contour strategy. I select my tool at 22mm bit and on the next page I start selecting the sketch edges as a contour. To select each individual edge I hold down the ALT or OPTION key while selecting the edge. And when everything is selected I check the direction of the cut and correct it by pressing the arrows. They should all point to the same direction and all be on the outside of the edges. 
The rest is placing the holding tabs at strategic points and set the multiple depths of the cut. I hope this explains the project strategy well enough. If you have any questions regarding this, just let me know in the comments. Right, so the actual machining of the whole project. Um, I always start with centering my tool and placing my stock onto the machine, um, getting Z0 right and X and Y0 right. And then I start with the dowel holes in my spoil board. So this is my six millimeter bit doing the four holes in my spoil board. I'm marking the holes so I know where they are. And then I'm placing my stock again, screwing it down, centering my Z0 again. And in this case, I'm doing the top side, so my Z0 is on top of the stock. I'm starting with a 22 millimeter bit uh, for the contour process, all the way to the bottom. And this is a process that makes a lot of mess, so there's some cleaning to be done at the end. And this takes about seven minutes or so, but this is the most messy part. This process doesn't only eat away a lot of material, but also prevents having those hard collisions with the stock uh, in later in the process. I used to do this with a six millimeter tool and extra oversteps, but I really like having this 22 millimeter tool uh, doing this. This is the next adaptive process, doing the fretboard and the headstock cleaning. And then it's time to clean up the machine and change my tool for the next process, which is only done with the 6mm tool. So this process is for the truss rod the first half of the truss rod and the second half, the last bit of the truss rod, is a bit wider. That is this bit and this bit I slowed down quite a bit because it's quite quick. And I'm doing the tuner holes here with the same tool and making the holes for the screws to go into and making the dowel holes and then I'm cleaning the machine again. Changing the tool to a round nose tool or ball nose. To make a nice curvature for the headstock to the fretboard transition. And I'm changing to the 4mm tool to make the precise cuts for it holding the down the screws in the holes for uh, the neck joint. So, and then it's time to unscrew the stock, flip it around, insert the dowel holes. Um, I'm setting C0 uh, at the bottom of the stock this time. I'm changing back to the 22 millimeter tool to start an adaptive process to eat away all the material that I don't need with a 0.5 stock to leave. And then it's eating away most of the material in preparation for um, the scallop process. And then it's time for the detailed work on the headstock and the neck joint, also with the 22 millimeter tool. So now these detail, 
So now this part is done and it's time for the last job um, doing the scallop uh, strategy uh, to get a, a nice round curve on the neck. I'm using a fairly small step over to get a nice smooth result afterwards and not having to send down uh, a lot of material. Instead, by using the smaller step over, it's pretty smooth. It's really precise at this very point. This process is so precise that it's eating away just a few uh, tenths of a millimeter each time. And now for the last time, uh, I can release the stock material with the guitar neck in it and clean up the machine. I'm taking the stock outside to release the guitar neck from the stock material and send it down just a bit on the sides. I'm sending down the sides because that's where the holding tips were um, to get it nice and clean. Also on the headstock just a bit. Here's my first test fit on the guitar body. I hope this video is helpful to you and thank you for watching and if you have any questions just let me know in the comments.